Hello, and welcome back to another Swiftly tutorial. So today, we're going to be talking about using Test Flight. Now, Test Flight is a recently uh, acquired by Apple beta distribution program, which allows you to send your applications, your specifically pre-release applications, to people that you specify to get feedback and get crash logs etc before then releasing your application to the general public. So this is an extremely useful feature. Since Apple has acquired it, it's changed a little bit so I thought it's useful to go through a tutorial, um, see how Apple has made it all Apple-y and tied it into the use of Apple IDs etc. So let's get started then. So first things first, you're going to want to go on to itunesconnect.com. You're going to be signing in with your developer ID, like so. Your developer ID needs to be an admin account in order to add new users, just so you know. So we're going to put your email address here. I've got my btinternet.com email address, which is, God knows, 10 years old. And uh, my password, of course, won't tell you that. So we click sign in here, like so. And then we get our beautiful new iTunes Connect. Lovely and snazzy. So let's firstly go down to users and roles. So this is where we're going to add our new beta tester user. So now what we're going to want to do is go to our users in the top left, click the plus button. Here we're going to put in our the person that will be a tester's name, it's not really important, so we could put in um, Wally Wabbit. I know this is important, this is their email address, so I'll just put in a temporary email address like so. Email dot com. And then once we've done this, we simply click next. Now here's when we're going to select our roles. So we're going to want to have a technical. Now we want a technical because as it says here we're going to be wanting to test. If you click admin, and this is a bit weird, but if you do click admin it will give the user access to your account. So this means they can delete applications they have on the App Store, any change any personal information, they can uh, destroy your life basically in essence so if they're not part of your team if they're simply beta testers then you'll want to click technical so make sure there's a check in the box like so and then we'll click next now here here's some notifications that you can set depending on what country they're in an app status reports and there's uh, information on what you want to and what you should click for me personally, I've never clicked any of these, and it doesn't really, well, it simply doesn't affect the, the beta testing program. So from here on, we'll just click save, and what this is going to do now is it's going to send an email to our beta tester. Now it's important that we get that email address correct, because this email that they receive, which I'll show on the screen now, is essentially a link for them to click, for them to then sign up onto their essentially developer account. So now I'm going to pretend that I am the beta tester and outline the process. So now your user will receive an email that looks exactly like this. From here they'll have to click activate your account which will then take them to an iTunes connect page where they'll then need to create a new password, enter their date of birth and provide a secret answer. Once they've done this, they'll then be asked to accept the terms of the service. So they'll simply click accept, like so. And then they have their own iTunes Connect account. So this is great. Now we've got Waldo Watkins in our list of users. He essentially is now our technical, shown by the role here. Now we're going to want to assign him to being a natural beta tester. So to do that we simply click on his name, like so, move to the right hand side of the screen where we see a switch and we just tick it off, like so, say internal tester. We've also got other things like, we'll just save that, sorry, we 
We've also got things like roles that we can also re re notify and the notifications that we can edit. But most importantly, we want internal tester. And once we've done that, make sure you click save and you're ready to go. So now the process of actually uploading our application. Now, if this is the first time you're uploading your application, so in this case we've got our application here. It's the best application in the entire world. Uh, if you haven't seen it, um, look back at other tutorials. It's essentially uh, an idea of creating reusable keyboards. So as you can see, it's the most ugliest application in the whole entire world, but it, in, it's rubbish, basically. But for all intents and purposes, this is the application we'll be using to upload. Now, like I said, if this is the first application, or the first time, sorry, you're going to be submitting this application, then what you're going to want to be doing is going to a Safari page and going to appledeveloper.com. From the member center, you're going to want to sign in with your um, developer account, go to certificates, identifiers, and profiles, and then go to certificates. Then we'll go to app IDs and we're going to want to click the plus button. So essentially what we're doing is we're registering our application that we will then upload onto iTunes Connect. So this is the step you'll need to do first and I'll show you in, the, in, in, in a little bit why it's important and why you need to do it. But this is, uh, this is the process you need to do first in order to progress. So let's give our application a name, so we'll call this keyboard app. This is the app ID prefix it's going to give us. Now we want our app ID. Now we're going to get this from our Xcode project. So as you can see here, we've got an amazing app uh, reusable keyboard. So this is our bundle identifier. You can find this by clicking on the top left, highlighting this project name, going into general. And this at the very top under identity. So to put this in here, we'll make sure this is typed exactly the same. So re dash usable, re dash usable and then it's dash keyboard, keyboard and that didn't put a dash in, it's evil, it hates me reusable oh, I wish you could put two desktops next to each other, reusable usable, now oh, look at this, I can't spell usable, oh, I should have chosen something simpler shouldn't I reusable keyboard, I think that's it it's important because these two need to link up because that's how they know what associates. That that's that basically the connection between those two, you know, from the internet and the project itself. So now we've got this app services. You can look at this through yourself, anything you need, but for me it's just a sample application, so it doesn't matter. So confirm our application ID and we'll click submit. Like so, and done. And then we'll have keyboard app right here with our ID. Let's go to our Xcode project. I like to do this just to confirm if things work. So we go to Xcode and Preferences. We go to Accounts, click our Apple ID and View Details. We'll click a little refresh button here and hopefully we should get an extra provisioning profile that should appear. There it is, like so. So now we know that it's connected up properly and you know the online version is working which is always always a good thing. So click Done and voila. Back to iTunes Connect again. It is a lot of jumping around for the first time. Make sure you're signed in with your developer ID as before. Now we're going to create our new application by clicking on My Apps. We click the plus button, a new iOS app. A name, keyboard app, just like before. I'm not Australian, but I'll choose Australian English because it's quick. And bundle ID. Now, it's important that we've just done the step before via uh, this app ID identifier because this allows us basically to it allows basically the option to show up in the list below and we need this to continue so here's our thing amazing app that reusable keyboard if you miss a step below it gives you a little link which will take you to this page and then you can just do it then but it's nicer to do it in order then what we'll do 1.0 we don't have to worry about the SKU Actually, I will give it an SKU, I'll give it a um, test. So, and then create. 
and voila, that should create our application that's preparing for submission. So then what we do is, as you'll see in other things, you will put in all your other information provided uh, to make sure the app stands out on the App Store, etc, etc. For now, what we're going to do is so we've got an actual build of our application. So, we're going to bounce back to Xcode. We're going to go to Product and Archive. Now you'll see here it's not highlighted because, and I, I, I don't get this with Xcode, honestly, but for some reason, if you have the simulator selected, it won't show up with that option. You need to make sure iOS device is selected because it's not really implied, is it? So you click Archive. Now what this is doing is this is basically compiling our project, our application in release mode so it's nice and quick and zippy. Once it's finished, you've got to open up our organizer window automatically and show our application selected here. This is the app we want. We'll click Submit. We need to select our developer account. Click Choose. And then what it's going to do is prepare to archive. We have an option down the bottom, as you can see here. We, I want to keep this tick because I want to get crash logs, which essentially will, you know, it's important when you're beta testing to make sure your app doesn't crash. And if it crashes, crash logs are useful for fixing crashes. If you don't want that, then you can untick it. And once you've done that, click submit. What it's going to do, depending on the speed of your internet, it's going to upload the archive to iTunes Connect. So as you can see here, it's creating iTunes Connect, sending an API, etc., etc. And then once it's done, like so, I will resume. That's it. And then once it's finally uploaded, it will appear on our pre-releases tab. You just click here and the builds will get a new table that displays our first build that we've collected. And then we essentially just click on internal testers. We select our tester, like so and we simply save it. And that will then allow them to test the application before its initial submission. Now your user will know when there's a new pre-release version of the application because they'll receive an email in the account that, that, that's associated with their beta testing ID. And then from there, like before when they initially signed up, they just click on the link and follow it and it should just download straight and directly to their iPad. So, that's good, isn't it? I hope that's been useful for you. I hope that's been clear. If you have any other questions, then leave me a comment below and I'll, I'll try and help you out. Um, I am new to test flight as well. So, if you run into any problems, then it'd be useful, uh, you know, it'd be useful exercise for me to know because I'll have to figure it out too. So, maybe, maybe you can make a tutorial video. So, <laughs> I hope you have an absolutely awesome day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Have any questions? Leave me a comment, and I'll get back to you.